to have Coach Combs here to talk a little defense with you. Let's uh, <clears throat> let Coach get settled there, and let's uh, let's start it out with Stephen Meads to Cleveland.com. Stephen. Hey, Kerry. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Good. How you doing? Great. Thanks. All right. Um, I, last year, it seemed like you guys, just based off because of what the year was and your the time, I mean, you got here and then COVID and all that stuff, you guys had a lack of options based off just personnel of what you guys – who you could put out on the on the field, who you felt comfortable with. I know Stevin and Cam didn't do a lot this spring, but just that also gave some opportunities to some of these young guys like Legend and Lathan and Cam Martinez to just get opportunities and Ryan Watts to get out on the field. How much more comfortable are you and how much more at ease are you heading into fall camp just about what your options are from a personnel standpoint of what you can put on the field? Oh, uh, We're much, much more comfortable. We have uh, significantly more depth in the back end. So a great experience for those kids this spring. Uh, a lot of young kids getting a lot of reps. And, uh, you know, you don't want guys to be injured. And at the same time, it, it, it afforded the opportunity for us to really coach some depth in the back end. So uh, it, it's so, so much different than where we were a year ago, just in numbers and, and uh, in depth uh, across the board in the back end. All righty, let's go next to Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Kerry, it seems like it's uh, <clears throat> it seems like at times it's kind of easy to get lost in the shuffle there in the secondary with as many bodies as you have there. But um, how much easier, I guess, is for lack of a better term, has it been to evaluate some of these younger guys while the older veterans that you already kind of know what they can bring are are you know not on the field all the time? How much easier does that make it to evaluate guys like Cam and then the freshmen? Yeah, I, I think they got to play. You know, we had uh, I think ten defensive backs that were over four hundred and fifty reps in spring of team type reps, uh, which, which is awesome. And so those guys got a, had a great chance to play uh, coverage, to play in addition to all of the individual work, right? That, those are team reps. That's not seven on seven. That's not one-on-ones against the best wide receivers in the country. It's all of those things that, that you need to develop your skill set, uh, they were able to get uh, an awful lot of work. All right, let's go next to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Hey, Kerry, um, I know you had some guys out at the inside linebacker positions this spring, and your numbers, they were a little lighter there. So was was the idea of, of playing more of that hybrid guy in place of the Sam because of that, or is this the direction you'd like to see the defense go moving forward with kind of playing a safety linebacker hybrid more in that Sam spot than a traditional Sam linebacker? No, that's a great question, Bill. I think that what we – want to do is get our best 11 guys on the field. And, and I think that when you have to evaluate who's healthy, who's able, and who's capable uh, to play. And I think that uh, what, what spring allowed us to do was to just continue to develop options along those lines. And, and it was unfortunate that we had some injuries at linebacker, but it gave us the opportunity to put some different kids in some different spots, which I think, again, lends itself to depth in the fall. And so, uh, uh, not ideal all the time. Some guys playing in the box uh, that haven't played there before, but I think that, that that doesn't do anything but serve us well going forward. Hey, next up, we'll go to Dave Biddle, 24-7. Dave, go ahead. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Dave. Ryan Watts is a very tall corner at 6'3". You've coached a lot of tall corner, you know, guys like Eli Apple and, and many others, you know, Jeff Okuda. Um, I don't know if you've ever coached a, a corner this tall. Just uh, what stands out about him um, other than his height? And what do you expect out of him this fall, Kerry? Yeah, he had, he had a great spring, over 500 reps. He is tall. He's the tallest corner that I've ever coached. But he is he, – he's able to transition his body in short space quickness. Uh, he's got long speed. Uh, because of that length, I think getting his hands on receivers at the line of scrimmage will be of paramount uh, importance to him. And then his ability to have range in zone. You know, sometimes when you have that big win wingspan, you, you, you can get your hands on balls. And so those taller guys uh, can, can also do that uh, in zone coverage. So I, I thought it was a very good and productive spring for Ryan. I'm excited for him in the fall. Thank you. Yes, sir. All righty, next we'll go to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Terry. Hi, Bill. Um, you seem pretty confident with, with the DBs. Uh, but I want to ask you about the linebackers. Uh, obviously, Dallas wasn't there. Mitchell Milton got hurt. Um, how comfortable do you feel with them, uh, and specifically guys like Taraja and Kayvon and their development right now? Yeah. 
yeah, I thought that what what happened to those guys uh, was they had the opportunity to have so many reps at really multiple spots because of the uh, injury that their development was was really significant. And so uh, Tommy had a very good spring. Cody had a very good spring. And then uh, the two kids you mentioned, Kayvon and Taraja, uh, they, that they played the best football that I've seen them play uh, since they've been Buckeyes. So that core of four guys had the opportunity to get a lot of work. And, uh, and, and so I'm excited for them. And then it also gave Reed Carrico the opportunity to be on the field, you know, much more than you would have expected him to be. And so uh, the, 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 their opportunities were great. Uh, they handled them well. And I'm looking forward to watching them play in the fall. Thanks. All right, next we'll go to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye School. Gary, you got a couple of cornerbacks coming in this summer. What are you, uh, how is that process going with JK and, and Jordan? How much are you talking to them, keeping them up to speed on, on what to expect? Yeah, those kids have done a great job of staying uh, connected, uh, learning the playbook. It's not the same. You know, we experienced that last year. You, you're not learning on Zoom the same way that you're learning in person. And anybody who says that you are is kidding themselves. And there's no substitute for on the field activity. At the same time, uh, uh, Chris Fenelon with our strength staff is monitoring those guys and working with them on the workout plans and those kind of things. And, and, and obviously uh, uh, the coaches, Coach Barnes has, has uh, done extensive work with those guys, getting them prepared. I'm excited for them to get here. Their learning curve is gonna be like this. When they do arrive, it's gonna have to be intense and fast and we gotta get them ready. But again, I, I think there are kids that can help and can contribute, all three of those kids, uh, somehow, some way in the fall. And I'm looking forward to that. You know, I think that the, the depth in the back end is, is going to help us. So having kids who can run and having kids who can cover and having kids who can play so that a corner doesn't take 78 snaps in a game so that we can rotate guys and keep guys fresh and keep moving them along. Same thing at the safety spots. And, and uh, being able to play fresh guys, I think, will – will pay us great dividends uh, in the fall. All righty, next we'll go to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Kerry, just to follow up on the bullet, if that's something that you guys decide to make a full-time part of his defense, what do you think are the advantages of having a hybrid guy like that out there on the field regularly? Well, I think you, you, you have to make decisions uh, based on game plan of how you're going to attack the offense based on how they're going to attack you. And so uh, if you're playing in the, in the spread game and, and you've got teams that are going to uh, spread the field, throw the ball around a lot, you, you got to make sure that you have a plan to handle that. If you're going to play the teams that are going to pack it in and, and play with two tight ends and, and, and run the ball and those kind of things, you got to have a plan for that. What the bullet, what, what that position affords you the opportunity to do is, is – to try to play both sets of uh, personnel uh, that the offense has to offer without necessarily having to change your personnel on first and second down. And so um, I, I love the way those guys competed uh, this spring, uh, Craig and Ronnie, and, and uh, I'm excited for, uh, for their fall. And, and I think it's, it's going to be a piece of what we do, absolutely. All right, let's go next to Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Hey, Kerry, I have yet I another need. bullet question. Um, <laughs> curious, when you talk about Craig Young, you talk about Ronnie Hickman, those to us look like two very different kinds of athletes, like sort of like two sides of the same hybrid coin. Do you ultimately want like multiple options of the kind of athlete you would use at that position? Or is the long-term goal to take two guys like that and sort of develop them more towards being the same kind of athlete, if that makes sense? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that any anytime you're putting together a package, you're you're going to try to make sure that the defense is emphasizing your players' strengths and not exposing their weaknesses. And so while those two kids are different and and Court Williams would be the third piece of that puzzle, you're you're looking at different uh, types of players. Uh, you're going to, when they're on the field, you're going to want to emphasize what they do best. And so I think it's a, it's a great question. It's, it's a good study uh, for how you're going to use personnel in the fall. 
Um, obviously, that's not something we want to get into great detail about, but uh, there is there are differences uh, in in the skill sets of several of our players, and and I think one of the things that we want to be able to do is is not go out there and play with 11 guys. We want to be able to try to play. We've got a lot of kids, a lot of young talent, a lot of kids that are developing, and we want them to play, and we want them to play in roles that are going to where they're going to be successful and, and use them uh, to help us be successful. Okay, next up, Austin Ward, Leonard Monroe. Terry, it seemed like uh, Cameron Martinez had a, a solid spring and maybe he's more comfortable over there on defense. Can you evaluate the work he did over those 15 practices and, and how he's looking in the secondary now? Yeah, he had a, I thought he had a great spring. Uh, had the opportunity mostly to play uh, in that cover safety spot, played some corner as well. Uh, I think that the transition from being a great quarterback in high school to being a defensive back takes time. Uh, I think that his time has been really well spent. Uh, he, has a, he has great body control, and he also has a pretty good awareness of what offenses are doing. And so he has some subtle things in, in his game that are, are maybe a little bit more unique. And, uh, and, and so he, he took advantage of those things uh, this, uh, this spring. And, uh, you know, again, there's growth and development for all of our guys. This next three months is critical for them. But uh, he had a good spring, and he's put himself in a good spot to be able to, to compete for, uh, for good playing time in the fall. Thanks, Kerry. All right, righty, next, let's go to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Kerry, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to ask a two-part question. It's one question. You're you only can allowed tell one, you, Doug. You're only allowed one. There's but my whole, the premise of my question might be invalid. So I, I need help with the start of it. Well, then I'm probably going to not answer any part of it. <laughs> when you guys are playing three linebackers in a single deep safety, that idea of a defense is we're going to have enough guys in the box and we're going to stop the run and then we're going to deal with the pass. You want to do everything, but we're not going to let you run on you. Is that a fair assumption when you line up that way? I think if you play, yes, yes, I would think that would be an accurate assumption. If the more linebackers you play, the more you are gearing yourself to stop the run. Correct. Okay. So in a world where we know what these passing offenses look like now, and you guys see it, you saw Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones and Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell. With where the game has gone, are you reevaluating whether the way we line up in our base that stop the run first and then deal with the pass? Maybe that's not how we should think that now if we're going to go with a bullet or maybe play more safeties or whatever, because of the passing games in college football, are you rethinking anything about what your base defense looks like against, at least against certain teams? I think you're, I think that it would go back to the original question uh, today and just talking in generalities, Doug, we want to get our best players on the field. And so we had a core group of really good linebackers last year. Everybody would agree that that, that group had experience and talent and, and they could play. And, and that was a strength of our defense. And so as you look at uh, the, the totality of our personnel, we've got a really good, strong front, right? We've, we've got guys that are interchangeable parts up front and, and uh, we're excited about them. So, so we wanna make sure that we're maximizing their ability. And uh, we're, we, we got caught in a situation this spring where we had fewer linebackers. Doesn't mean that we're gonna have fewer linebackers in the fall. Uh, those guys come back, they're healthy. We get it. We, we, we are able to incorporate that. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we are structuring our defense in order to uh, defend what the offense and, and attack the offense in what they do best. And, and so, you know, based on your schedule and based on who you're playing, that's kind of how you formulate the plan. And so you, you, you have to, it's not an overall answer for, okay, it's, college football they're throwing the ball more so we got to do this it's just this week against this opponent how are we going to play that and we would like to think that we have more options available to us this fall uh probably just because of depth than we probably had last fall and so we're excited about that Thank all right we'll do two more for coach combs uh the first one to joey Crawford, columbus dispatch Terry, just wanted to ask if you had any, um, I guess, expectation or hope or, or about getting Marcus Hooker back in your secondary at all by the end of 
I guess just later this year, just kind of what's the latest on him? Yeah, that I have no comment on that because I don't I don't know. So anything I would say would be foolish, but appreciate the question. All righty, we'll wrap it up with Jeremy Birmingham, Leonard Monroe. Hey, Kerry, obviously, as you mentioned, the linebacker position is so thin that you guys had to put a long snapper and Rowan McCullough at linebacker <laughs> for the spring yeah. game. How hard is it to resist the temptation to just take an athlete like Craig Young and move him back into linebacker and just say, hey, we need you here. This is where you're going to have to play as opposed to the long term view of the defense. Yeah, I think that's well, that's what you have to do. Right, Jeremy, we have to be prepared. And, and we went through this whole process last year in the COVID world where guys had to be versatile and they had to know and learn more than one position. I think we talked about that at length and we coached them that way. Uh, the difference was last year, we're trying to do that in a remote environment and trying to get guys ready to play different spots. And, and it was, it, it's more challenging. I think this year, that's exactly where you find yourself. If you have an area of, of depth and an area where you don't have as much depth, then you may have to borrow from one to the other to, to, uh, to get guys on the field and to uh, allow them to play. But I, I don't want to retard anybody's learning process by moving them wholeheartedly or wholesale to a new spot if we can uh, continue to teach them and coach them in, in more than one spot and allow them to be versatile. I think we're better that way. And I think it prepares us for a long season that way. So I would say to you that it's, it's an excellent question. We're going to fight the temptation to put anybody into a specific box and try to use uh, uh, a really quality coaching staff to coach guys in, in different roles. To get them so linebacker, to do that. So linebacker depth is thin. Long snapper depth is is good. <laughs> I would say that. I don't know. I thought Rowan did a great job in the spring game. Ran around there and made plays and that kind of stuff helps out. We, we you know, you don't want to put anybody at risk out there in the spring game by having so many reps that something happens and 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 injury occurs. And so you know, yeah, we're we're gonna continue. I I. I don't have specific comments about Rome, but we're going to continue to move guys around in versatile ways to allow them to help the team the best way they can. Alrighty, And on that note, coach, thank you very much for spending a little time with us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Appreciate you.